Greeting and welcome to the Intensive Success Growth. I am your host, Nishan Sharma. Please give warm welcome to our guest, Imli Hamon. Imli is a coach, speaker, and podcast host. Welcome, Imli. Thank you, Nishan. I'm happy to be here. Let me start with this. Where were you? What happened? Who were you surrounded with that inspired you to do what you do today? Okay. Um, well, I guess I'd, I'd have to start with, um, you know, I ended, I worked for the Navy for my entire uh, career, pretty much. I retired at age 56. So I worked as either a Naval officer or a Navy civilian. And I enjoyed that work, but I made that decision to get into that line of work when I was 18, right? I mean, how much do you know about what you want to do when you're 18? And um and when I was getting ready to retire, you know, I had been a contracting officer awarding contracts for weapon systems and uh, airplanes for the Navy and the Marine Corps, and, and also being a uh, director of the small business office for the Navy and the Marine Corps, setting policy for how to get small businesses into uh, do business with the Navy and the Marine Corps. I was kind of tired of that, and I knew I wanted to do something different. And I decided, you know, I went to this conference in 2014 that kind of introduced me to a different way of living and introduced me to coaches, introduced me to podcasters. And that's when my mind opened up about like, well, I think I'll, I'll be a podcast host and I'd also like to be like to be a coach. And it's interesting. Um, I thought about, well, what would I coach people on? And I thought, well, you know, I, I'm somebody who can get a lot done. I've accomplished a lot. I can get a lot done. I'll, I'll coach people on how to get more done during the day. And it's so opposite of what I coach now on now because I coach on how to create a life you love living now. And I, I'm also so much more aware of how and who I am being while I'm doing. I mean, I was really driven and accomplished and achieve, 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 achieve. And um, I didn't really always pay attention to who I was being and how I was being and how I was living my life. So um, that's why I decided to become a coach and a podcast host. And I've, and I've learned so much along the way. Okay. What are the top three reasons why do people fail? Why people fail? Well, I guess the question is, what is fail? And failing is, it, you know, I think a reason somebody might fail is because they're really trying. They're they're pushing themselves. They're trying something new, something that they've never done before. You know, like what is it, Thomas Edison? You know, I don't know how many times he tried to invent the light bulb. You know, Michael Jordan, how many missed free throws did he make before he learned to make a lot of them? So I think um, part of it is, you know, taking a look at our attitude about what failure is and what it isn't. Um, so I think, you know, people might fail because they are, they're pushing themselves and something doesn't work and then they can learn from that. Uh, people also may fail because they don't really try. It could be two opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Yeah. And I think also being able to ask for help is something that I've learned from my interviewing people on my podcast. It's called the Onward Podcast, and it's all about facing adversity and moving forward. For the first two years, that's what it was about. And now it's about create a life you love living now. But a lot of my guests talked about how they move forward in the face of adversity, and it was to, to ask for help. You know, we're supposed to be in community with one another. And um, we don't have all the skills that it might take to achieve something. So learning to ask for help is, um, is important. Yes. Okay. What's your top three success secrets that other can model from you? Uh, I would say asking for help is one. <laughs> Uh, the other one is having a uh, having a positive attitude, and that doesn't mean like oh it's rainy outside. I'm happy because of you know it it means it's all about um, one of the areas I coach in is called positive intelligence, and and this I'm holding up a book here. It's called Positive Intelligence: Why Only 20% of Teams and Individuals Achieve Their True Potential. So it's all about having a mental fitness, a positive mindset. Our minds can sabotage us, and so. This pro this coaching program gets to the root cause of how we self-sabotage and how we can prevent that. So I think that's a key to being successful is to um, being in control of our minds. You know, I'm not my mind. My mind generates a thought 
and I get to choose whether or not I want to believe that thought or not or move forward. And sometimes it's easier said than done. So in this program, we learn how to create new neural pathways so that our automatic reaction is more of a positive one. So that's one way of being successful. I think another way is um, networking, having mentors, being able to ask for help, um, you know, knowing other people, helping other people, and then they want to help you. So being in community with other people, not just going at it alone. I mean, when I first started my coaching business there, I learned about some things that I, I knew that I didn't like. I tried to do them all myself anyway, but then I start, then I hired a virtual assistant. You know, I have a virtual assistant that does the editing for my podcast because I don't like that attention to detail. I hired a, a virtual assistant that um, it does helps me with social media posts and just helps me keep organized. And then I also hired a bookkeeper. So um, investing in those areas enabled me to focus on areas where I'm stronger and they could focus on areas where they're stronger too. And we all work as a team and it works out uh, so much better. Okay, so, amazing. So what motivates you within? What motivates me within? Um, I've always been self-motivated. I don't know if it's because I was the very first child <laughs> or, or what, you know, first children are usually achievers. Uh, but, you know, just we're only, so I'd say, you know, something that happened recently in my life about three years ago, right after I retired, I was like, yes, I'm retired. I can, I can live my life the way I want wait, who am I and what do I want to do? So I had to kind of figure that out. But also three weeks after I retired, my daughter called me and uh, told me that her dad had cancer. So my kid's dad was diagnosed with uh, stage three, it might've been stage four kidney cancer. Uh, it was in his lungs. It was in his neck. Uh, he was starting to lose control of his arm. He became paralyzed two weeks after his diagnosis in his arms and he passed away in five months. And I saw that I helped take care of him, my daughter. I helped my kids through that. That motivates me to create a life I love living now because I saw him die with regrets. I saw him die with regrets about how he had lived his life. Uh, he hadn't retired yet. He was 64. He was, you know, working, working, working. He didn't have the best relationship with me or his kids. And um, I could see, even though we didn't talk a lot, I could see what really mattered most to him. And that motivates me to live a life I love living and to help others. I mean, and to do it now, don't wait. Well, when I retire, or when I get a, when I find a partner or when this happens or when I get a promotion, no, what can you do today to love your life? because we only have one life and it's short. And when you, if you could fast forward to your 90, 100 year old self and ask what's important now, you probably get a different answer than what you're thinking is important. And um, so that motivates me. So what's your company motto? Ooh, company motto is, um, well, it, it's create a life you love living now. And um, also, I, uh, my, uh, you know, my podcast is called Onward, and I also lead this group called the Onward Movement. So I'd say Onward is another motto, Onward Together. Let's move forward together. Yeah. Okay. So who is your ideal client? Oh, my ideal client is a woman who's in her probably 50s to 60s, either getting ready to retire or wanting to retire soon or retired, empty nester, you know, has put everybody and everyone else and everything else at first, you know, and herself last, uh, you know, in her life, you know, her kids, her partner, everything. And, and now she's retired or getting ready to retire. And she's like, well, what's next? And she probably doesn't even know how to uh, put herself first, how to take care of her needs. Um, so I kind of just described who I was. And um, so my ideal client is someone who I was about three years ago. Oh. Yeah. So how do you find your ideal client? Uh, I'm on a lot of it's through word of mouth. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn a lot. My pat, I'm connected to a lot of people. Um, one thing is, is that, you know, when I first retired, I was work, 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 you know, and now I've learned 
how to create more space for myself. And so I pretty much only um, do quote unquote, it's not even work because I love it, but about 20 hours a week. So I'm not looking to, you know, I get all these messages in my box. Do you want to expand your business? Do you want to grow? You want to hire more people? No, no, no. <laughs> so, you know, I'm kind of picky about the clients I take on. It needs to be somebody who is um, willing to take a look at themselves and work on themselves. And um, so I find them through my website or through LinkedIn. Some of them find me through my podcast. Yeah. Okay. How do you handle rejections? Well, uh, the old Emily about three years ago wouldn't really would would think, oh, I must be a loser or I'm not the best coach or whatever. And I've really learned to look at those thoughts because our thoughts create our feelings, which create our action or inaction. And that gets our results. So if we're not happy with the results we're getting, you know, we, we need to really look at what our thoughts are about a particular situation or a circumstance. And uh, that positive intelligence pro coaching program really helps with that. But I just need to be, I just focus on not need, I focus on being detached from the outcome because, and I don't look at it as I'm selling my coaching business. I'll introduce it to you. And um, I only want to coach people who are ready to be coached and who want to be coached. So if you say no, um, the earlier you say no, the better, because, you know, I can, it frees me up to talk to other people. Um, I'm not going to push people to, to do it. So I just handle it as um, that's, you know, on my way to a yes at some point, but I'm detached from the outcome. How do you, and, you know, I used to say that and now I am that, right. I really am detached from the outcome. Yeah. So how do you start your day? I start my day, get up and I stretch a little bit because as I get older, my hips are tight and everything. And typically I um, do a kind of a meditation and I journal and I count my blessings. Gratitude, I think, is a big way to start the day. And I and I typically start my day out also with um, just me time. I used to get up and just go to work. I, I was busy. I had to work. I had to get stuff done. I you know, and I had a coach that said she wanted me to meditate for uh, 40 days straight. And I'm like, okay, 15 minutes, I could do that. And every week she'd say, what day are you on? I'd say one. And she'd say, well, why? I'd say, you don't understand. I'm busy. I've got a lot to do. So see, I've worked on, you know, I was believing that. But when I did the meditation in the morning and when I started the day off, focused on me, on inward and getting myself set, focused on who I'm being while I'm doing my days went much smoother. So it took a while to, for me to believe that uh, because all my life I've just been busy, 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 move, move, move. So I do that. I also like to start out with exercise in the morning. Like this morning, I did some Pilates and yoga at the gym because by but then um, I've got my exercise out of the way. Maybe later in the day, if I feel up to it, I go on a nice walk or hiking or, or swimming or something. But getting that me time done in the morning is really helpful to setting up the day to be successful. I also do meditation last seven years. Oh, good for you. Yes. Yeah. And really, how do you feel about it? Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling good. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful that my children are in a really good place. Um, it's been almost, it's coming up on three years since their dad passed away and it's really challenging, but they're both in a really good place. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that my parents are still alive and that I live a mile away from them. Um, that's one of the reasons I retired at 56. I wanted to be able to spend more time with them. I know so many people whose parents have passed or whatever. So um, I get to spend a lot of time with my parents and I'm appreciative of that. And I'm thankful for a healthy mind and for the most part, a healthy body. I've got some aches and pains, but you know, um, I don't need a lot externally to make me happy. I've found that internal peace. Uh, I don't need to buy a new purse or a new pair of shoes or go on a trip. I used to feel like I had to go camping all the time to get away from my house so I could relax. And I've learned that I can also relax at home um, by working on my mindset. So I'm grateful for that. 
How young are you? How, excuse me, how young am I? I am 59. Okay. Yeah, you are, I'm 59. You are not 59 years young. You are 18 years young with more than 41 year experience. I love that. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, in my mind, I feel 18 and, you know, I know my dad does too. He's 88. You know, the older you get in your mind, you still feel young. So I like that. Yeah. Who is your living mentor? My living mentor? Um, let me see. That's a good question. I would say it's um, my daughter and my son in two different ways. Like my daughter is, has always been really good at taking care of herself because she's got some invisible illnesses. So she can't go, go, go. And she has to rest. And I really admire that about her. And my son, because, you know, we all have habits that maybe we want to overcome and everything and uh, my, my, or changes that we want to make about myself. And I'm, and I'm just really proud of my son who in October is celebrating five years sober from drugs and alcohol. And he stayed sober through COVID, through his dad dying, through um, getting married and, you know, being at home with a, with a little one, his wife has a, a son and, and then they had two, a miscarriage of twins and then another miscarriage, you know, anyone who can, who can go through all that and not drink or not, you know, per, you know, go back to their old habits, I admire. So what advice you will give younger yourself? My younger self, slow down. Yeah, slow down. And, you know, cause I kind of tend to be restless like in the past up until recently, you know, when I learned that positive intelligence, I, I don't think I was, I know that I wasn't in the moment as much. I was thinking about something that had happened or what I might have to do in the future. And I would tell my younger self to just be in the moment more. It's all going to be okay. Okay. So um, what's your plan to achieve your goal? My plan to achieve my goal is, you know, my, my goals, I have several goals and I review them every uh I learned this in a coaching program with Mary Morrissey. Um, it's called Dream Builder. Uh, we we come up with you know a vision of what we would love three years from now, and then we work backward towards that, where we might write a three month and then a six month and then a one year goal, and we are very specific about that. We. You know, I have a journal, I have it right here, where we write our dream in all areas of our life, like health and wellness, time, money, freedom, um, and some other areas of our life and relationships. And we create like a snapshot, you know, how you have a picture of something that happened in the past. We create a snapshot of our future selves having achieved that goal. What's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? Can we visualize that? So I review that pretty much on a, on a daily basis. And sometimes I might change my goal um, or where I want to be in three years, but I'm intentional about it, I think is the ultimate answer to that. Because so many times we say, yeah, I want that. And then we, you know, we don't do the little steps that it takes. If, and if you've read the book, Atomic Habits, that's another, you know, good book about how to habit stack and to really get to where you want to be. So in three years, you can say, I accomplished this, you know, that's how I did. That's how I got to be a certified coach in two different areas and, um, and um, just baby steps. Cause it, if you look at your big goal, it's kind of can be overwhelming. Yes. Right. How can we help you? Help me uh, just help get the word out about my, me and my coaching and uh, you know, let people know about, I think, positive intelligence, whether I'm your coach or somebody else, this, this, in my mind, life-changing okay. has really helped me deal with all the stress that's going on and with COVID and with, you know, just what's going on in the world, you know, our thoughts can go everywhere and how do we remain centered and create new neural pathways in our mind to, you know, be empathetic with ourselves and others, to be compassionate, to get curious about thoughts that pop in our mind and say, well, is that really true? How do I know? And, 
it helps with all areas of our lives. So helping spread the word about positive intelligence, um, I think is, uh, would, would help so many people in this world. What would you like to say about your guest experience on this show? Oh, this has been really fun. I like the questions. Uh, and, um, you know, I probably could have watched a few of your episodes and had all the questions down and had it written out, but I didn't. I, that's how I like to do my podcast. I don't, you know, do a ton of preparation before so that it's really scripted. Um, and uh, I loved your questions and they made me think and I learned from it. <laughs> okay. So what's your final word? My final word is you just create a life you love living now. And, you know, just to give you a little example, we tend to go through our days. It doesn't have to be this huge thing. We go through our days like I've got to do this, then this, then this. And so one day it was a beautiful day outside. I'm looking outside now. It kind of is now. It was a beautiful day outside. And it was like a time for me to go to my yoga class. And, and I was getting ready to go. And then I thought, I can just do my yoga right out front in the yard, you know, and enjoy the sunshine too. So, you know, take a look at your routines and think where could I mix it up a little bit that would make me, my life more enjoyable, more of what I love. Thanks, Emily, for sharing your wisdom with us on the behalf of our community and team. We really appreciate you. Until the next time, all good wishes to you. Thank you, Nishant. My pleasure.